Welcome to Rough Riders, I'm Jay. And if this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. So when we bought our Soul Dust travel trailer, we quickly found out that the 100 amp hour lead acid battery, it's an AGM, was horrible for boondocking, which is what we expected. So I knew I was already gonna make plans to upgrade the battery system to lithium iron phosphate. And so I made a video, kind of a walkthrough of how I upgraded the batteries to these, uh, two 300 amp hour epic batteries um uh, lithium batteries and so you know you can go check out that video if you if you want to learn more about you know how to do that process um, in this video we're going to continue that uh it, it upgrade of the electrical system in the solar dusk and we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough of getting the troll the, the trailer a little more solar ready in the battery upgrade video we looked at the main electrical system of the soul dusk in this video, we're gonna take a look at what Intech means by the solar prep. And really what they're talking about is just an SAE ZAMP connector on the side of the trailer that's wired directly to the battery. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do in this particular video. We're gonna add a solar controller. We're gonna add a Lynx distribution center. We're going to add a battery disconnect switch along with a uh, break, circuit breaker switch for the solar panels. We're also going to add a 250 amp fuse along with a smart shunt to monitor the battery charging state. Just as I did when I put the batteries in parallel, I'm using my uh, Timco cutters to cut the cable, my uh, Amaze CNC crimper, and just some strippers that I picked off uh, Amazon um, to uh, make my cables. To mount my Lynx distribution box, I cut a piece of board, glued and screwed it into the center support here on the seating uh, to give me a place to uh, mount this. And then I'm going to take the Lynx distribution box and put it in here like this. So that saves me wall space along this wall right here uh, because there's not a whole lot of space in this compartment to work with. So this will give me a, a little extra room as I route my cables out of here and into the uh, uh, inverter charger when I install that. Since the space I'm working in is really tight, I'm trying to pre-install the cables to make it a little bit easier as I uh, hook everything up. I'm installing my fuse block for my Class T fuse down here and I'm gonna run straight from this terminal down to the uh, uh, fuse block and I'm using a right angle lug. So there's the uh, cable installed. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install the uh, switch. I've already got the cables installed on this, so I'm just gonna mount that right there. And um, then we'll uh, uh, connect the last wire over to the Lynx distribution positive terminal right there. So right there is the Class T fuse installed. That's a 250 amp fuse based upon uh, the load size that I have in this particular trailer. Okay, so here's all the power and ground cables hooked up. I still need to pop my fuse in right there. Uh, the switch is in, all the cabling back here is done. So um, this part is almost finished then we uh, need to work on putting the solar stuff. So there's the solar intake, there's my disconnect, and then here's the controller. So we'll get all that stuff wired up and then get power and ground to the Lynx distribution box um, hooked up for the trailer for the DC load, and uh, we should be in good shape. Here you can see where I ran the ground for the Lynx distribution box through the floor to the outside. I uh, grounded it to the trailer frame and to reduce stress because that's a really tight uh, squeeze right there I used uh, a standoff a spacer to uh, uh, keep the strain off the cable but still ground the trailer to the frame okay so the hardware install is complete 
I've got all my wires uh, connected up and buttoned up. I've got my fuse installed. I've got my Lynx distributor installed. I've got the uh, solar controller installed and wired up. Uh, everything's powered up and running. I still need to test the solar panels and set up the Victron app for the solar controller and verify uh, that everything is working, but uh, we'll get that done tomorrow. We just missed the daylight today. So uh, we'll uh, finish this off tomorrow. Since we ran out of daylight yesterday before we could test, uh, we're setting everything up this morning. Uh, so I went ahead and put the solar panels here in the back of my truck and they are connected up to the uh, trailer with the uh, SA connector adapter. And this should be an interesting test, should give us some pretty good data because um, I've got this tree right here that's gonna be partially obstructing it uh, as the sun makes its way over. So it'll tell us how well these panels perform when uh, they're partially shaded and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then towards this afternoon, I'll move them out in front of the trailer. Uh, so the sun is gonna set over this way. Uh, so we'll uh, put them in full sun in the afternoon and see how they do as well. So with the afternoon sun, we were getting about 249 watts and about 18 amps coming into the battery. It wasn't full direct sun, uh, but out of 400 watt panels getting 249 watts, I'm fairly pleased with that. Here's the final install uh, of all the wiring. I used 4 watt cable for the uh, distribution box to and from the battery, 6 AWG wire for the controller, and 10 AWG wire for the solar disconnect breaker box. Now my overall goals here was to maximize the overall space that I had because I was working in a limited space and so I wanted to leave as much room for a uh, inverter charger as possible. I also wanted to have really good airflow in the uh, cabinet uh, since there's a lot of heat generating components there. Okay so there you have it. That's uh, the process for uh, upgrading the electrical system to make it a little more solar friendly, solar ready. Uh, by installing all those components. If you have any questions or comments, please post those below and I'll get to those just as quickly as I can. And if you enjoyed the video, please uh, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Uh, your interactions with the videos really is a lifeblood for creators like myself because it helps me understand what kind of videos you want to see. It also helps the video perform better on YouTube uh, so that I can continue to bring you these types of videos. So uh, please consider that. Uh, and, uh, you know, other than that, thanks for watching. We, uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time here on Rough Riders.